world headquarters of common sense. Talk radio. Look, this is what people are telling me on, on Twitter. They're telling me down the pub. They're saying you can't say anything anymore. The world's gone mad. Yes, everyone is scared of being cancelled. I can't <laughs> yeah. I can't count how many times I have people telling me, oh, I'm so glad you say the things that you say because I wouldn't be able to get away with it. And I just think, you, you know, how can you be neutered in your own country? That's horrible. That's a horrible feeling to feel like, you know, things are on the line because of something, someone disagreeing with your opinion. It's ridiculous. Well, of course it's ridiculous. But the thing is, I, I do get the sense that, you know, we, uh, and particularly for those people who work in businesses, in big corporations, you can't actually say anything because someone somewhere will take offence. Now, surely what we should be doing is having differing opinions, differing points of view and agreeing to differ. And surely then you discuss it because actually when you bring something out into the open, you remove all prejudice and stigma don't you exactly and i think most people what most people need is just to understand the opposing viewpoint they don't necessarily have to agree with it but i think what sparks the tension and what keeps people afraid is the fact that most people are not really trying to understand them especially the ones that are trying to get them cancelled so if if you have a space for open dialogue that takes a, that takes away the stigma and the negativity surrounding people that just have opposing views to you and i think that's really important um and I think that's definitely the environment that we need to start generating because imagine if our children are growing up in a generation where they can't say what they think. It's a, you know, slippery slope from here. Well, it certainly is. Where did it all go wrong, do you think? Can you actually pinpoint it to anything in particular? Because certainly things have changed in my lifetime. We used to be far more, um, well, controversial, but certainly we were far more straight talking than we are now. I think it uh, probably, I, I noticed when it got really bad when businesses started to get involved. <laughs> yes. um, I, I think that's when I noticed, because I, I, I used to think about it, was it when celebrities started ranting on Twitter about how much they hated Trump? But you can ignore celebrities, right? But you can't ignore businesses, you know, taking jobs away from people because there's a, a, a bunch of loud activists on Twitter that don't agree with them, right? <laughs> or the fact that I'm getting emails from Ben and Jerry's about Black Lives Matter or the fact that a, an ice cream company is yelling at my home secretary on Twitter. I mean, that's when we really descended into lunacy, when businesses forgot that we that their bottom line is about profits and not trying to lecture to the public about what they think is the next, you know, social justice crisis or whatever. Well, well, absolutely. I think this was summed up for me when um, there was a brilliant piece done by a journalist where he went up and, and stalked various politicians and asked them what, what the definition of a man was or, wh or whether or whether women could have a penis. And it was just fantastic try, watching these politicians squirming and not being able to answer the question. What on earth has gone wrong with the political class? I cannot believe, because I was actually looking at the statistics of this, because I was like, what is actually the pre prevalence of, of uh, transgenderism in society and you know basically these discussions that are creating this kind of fear around actually being able to define what a man or woman is and i think 0.6 percent and i'm i i just thought so 0.6 percent of a population is making poli our polit politicians so scared that they're willing to lie because they're not they don't actually not know what a woman is right Keir Starmer has a wife he most certainly knows what a woman is <laughs> well you would hope so well, I, I'm sorry, but, you know, they have, a lot of politicians have wives and children that I'm pretty sure they know how basic biology works. They know what a woman is, but they're willing to lie because they're scared. That's what, that, yes. that's what worries me, is but the lack of integrity there. We all know what a woman is. We don't need to ask them. We don't need this sort of gotcha moment with politicians. I'm more concerned why they're so willing to lie. Because well, they're, they're, not, they're not hiding from it, they're actually lying, they're actively lying. They're actively lying to court votes, you're right. So what they want to do is to ensure that they don't alienate any section of society. But by doing that, they actually alienate everyone. Yes, because it's completely absurd. How can you try and govern a country when you can't define what half of the country is? <laughs> it's a very what, good point. What exactly are you trying to lead? It, well, it's a very good point. Well, let's look at a couple of stories that are in the press at the moment. And today, obviously, the EA, EHRC, this is the Equalities and Human Rights Commission, have said, have decreed that transgender women can be lawfully excluded from female-only places. Now, I, I've spent a long time thinking about this and, and you know, obviously thinking about what, what constitutes a biological male, a biological female. If you do have uh, go through a change and you change sex, then clearly there are, there are anatomical differences that, that you can see and perceive. And, of course, the problem with this, and it seemed quite... I thought it was all right what the government had said or the EHRC had said, but then everyone's been kicking off on Twitter, they've been kicking off on various shows, including Talk Radio, all day today about it, and... And the fact is, equality and diversity groups have said this is transphobic. Surely we should allow women to have safe spaces in hospital 
you know, when you're in a hospital gown, you hardly look flattering at the best of times. Clearly, <laughs> clearly what we need... Well, you don't, I can assure you. You normally have your bottom sticking out. Yeah. But surely... <laughs> we, we, oh, you remember? Yeah, I know, it's, it's a great sight. But surely, what's wrong with saying, actually, you know, we have uh, biologically, we have genotypically male and female, we then have people phenotypically, what you look like, are you male or female, and, and, and act accordingly? Or am I just too simplistic? I think the word transphobia has now almost become synonymous with common sense, which is uh, like, I feel like I'm at this point, I'm wearing it as a badge of honor. Like I've been called a turf and, I, and now I say I'm the mayor of Turfistan because I cannot believe, and this is the thing. It's Could you all, explain that turf? Yeah, trans exclusionary radical feminist because I have the, the and I, I don't say that, okay. I have the <laughs> honest, because I don't know if I'm allowed to say what I want to say on, on, on air. To, to assert that a biological male is not a biological female. Right. And that is the only male and female th there is, distinction-wise. Well, well um, you are right, though. Biological men and biological women are different biologically and genotypically. That is correct. That is yeah. true. But the, the, the issue here is, is this idea that even if you transition, whatever that means, you can now, you are now fully the opposite sex you identify as. Look, I have no problem with people identifying however they wish. But the reality on the ground, especially for in sports, especially in women's spaces, is there is a binary which exists for a reason, and we should respect that because we cannot make half of the population feel uncomfortable for the sake of 0.6 of the population that are choosing to live in a particular way. I, I don't even like the language around it. Like now, we're being called cis women yeah. because now we, we, we've, we've been given a label to try and differ us from trans women when it's really just women right women well, and trans. I, I don't even like that it infuriates me well also you have to have your pronoun on the end of your email now don't you i didn't even know what to put oh um yeah i didn't mine didn't go down to her. i said her highness <laughs> people that had some strong words for me i'm sure they did but also surely there, there's another thing going on here which is that you know the decision from the ehrc is one thing and therefore it's a legal duty to comply and yet we're seeing hospital trusts actually sending out emails saying you should defy this ruling what is going on in our in our systems in terms of public health provision if only our hospital trusts had the same activism when that poor woman was raped on an NHS ward by a trans woman, right? We, we, we didn't hear anything about that. Or when we did hear about it, they were insensitively going on about how that never happens, even though one is far too many, right? When we, when we talk about trans women in female prisons that are raping these women, these biological women, you know, we hear that never happens, right? There's always a way to put it down because they don't want to face the reality that actually there is a reason why they're men and women's faces. We live in a society where we should be able to have these frank conversations because even a five-year-old can tell the difference between a man and a woman. So should we move on to Disney now? I've always loved Disney films. I think they're wonderful. Children absolutely adore them. Um, what is Disney, what is going on in the world of Disney? Well, D Disney uh, has also lost its mind. I mean, <laughs> I, well put. I, yeah, I mean, American politics is always more sort of polarizing. So I, I do sort of make room for that. But ever since the um, um, Parental Rights and Education Act came out in Florida, you have all these, these Democrats and these celebrities saying gay, 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 even though the bill doesn't even mention the word gay. And now we have leaked clips of the, the Disney CEO saying they're target, they're, they're aiming, well, it's not even just leaked clips, they're actually saying they're aiming to make 50% of their content sort of queer leaning. And I just think but that's for what? 4.5 percent of your population because that, that's the percentage of the population that identifies as lgbt T. plus yeah. right so it, it's 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 full on i mean you can make the argument that it's full on grooming because even statistically it doesn't even make sense why are you pushing this when it doesn't even make sense proportionally for your population right if only 4.5 percent of the population identifies as this sexuality or whatever why are you making half of your content, which is supposed to target children, pre-pubescent children that have nothing to do with gender identity or sexuality? Why, why are you doing this? It's, it's full on grooming. Well, well, the Disney's head of content says Generation Z or Z is 30 to 40 percent queerer than previous generations. And therefore, it's a business decision to target them. Well, I mean, unfortunately for them, they're going to see the results of their their actions because many parents are absolutely great to let their children, you know, do, have anything to do with Disney. I know that the Disney Plus has lost, I think, 350,000 subscriptions in the last uh, week or so. So, you know, the, the backlash is coming because when you talk, when you target the home, something as intimate as parents and their children, there is fierce backlash. And that's something that they can't avoid. 
and it's really sad because I grew up on Disney. I love Disney. I've seen basically every film. I can sing all the songs, <laughs> but this is just absurd, and there's really no need for it. It's just full-on grooming. Well, can I just then finish off by talking about the fact that schools, uh, there's this headline saying schools should focus on factual information about historical figures and teach the empire in a balanced manner. This is uh, Ofsted, Amanda Spielman, who basically said, um, essentially, we need to start talking about history based at, in in its historical context and stop yeah. jumping to conclusions. And clearly, you must have very strong opinions about this. Yeah, and I mean, you know, Kemi Badenoch um, had some words about this a few weeks ago as well, but talking about pre um, providing a nuanced, balanced view of the British Empire, the good and the bad, because really there is there is a gap in our education system that's moving towards just painting the British Empire as this horrible, evil empire. And no one is denying that there were aspects of the British Empire that were absolutely horrible, but we don't even hear the goods of the British Empire. And this constant, you know, self-denigration is actually affecting you know young people's view of of this country and their their pride in feeling british i know there was a yougov survey that said i think about only less than 30 percent of young adults under the age of 30 feel proud to be british and that number is more than double when you look at um, people 60 and over and that's a that's a shame because there's so much to be proud of being british and there's so many people that would actually leave their native countries to come here which actually says something about this country and the fact that students aren't learning that they don't feel any connection to this country they're not learning a nuanced view of british history is a huge problem and these are the future generations that are going to be teaching future future generations you know how are they going to feel are they going to rename britain to brit no no <laughs> Good talk. Hot, Hot talk. talk. Bold talk. Talk radio. Listen on your smart speaker. Watch it live on your smart TV. The world headquarters of common sense. Talk radio.